Property rights are at the heart of our constitution. Indeed, I'd go as far to say it's one of the four great pillars, along with freedom of speech, the rule of law and democracy. Free markets depend on them, but governments love to regulate. They regulate because they can and they want to replace freedom with central control. And this is at the heart of the problems posed by the Renters' Reform Bill, sponsored by the Housing Secretary, Michael Gove. The bill is a socialist error. Bizarrely, it seems to abolish fixed-term tenancies between tenants and landlords, something that both sides often want. And it also seeks to remove Section 21 evictions. Now, these inevitably have a bad press and conjure up Rachmanite landlords getting rid of good tenants, but that's not the reality of them. What Section 21 does, it reassures landlords that they will be able to get their properties back, and this guarantee increases supply. And all sensible landlords, and most are sensible, want to keep good tenants. They have an investment, they want to receive the rent, and so they're happy for tenants to, spare, to stay as long as they do pay the rent. But the security, the knowledge, the certainty that a property can be taken back into ownership without giving a specific reason encourages landlords to come into the market, increasing supply and lowering prices for tenants. As an aside, it can also be helpful for tenants, sometimes there's a difficult tenant who's annoying the neighbours, and it's easier to say, I'm wanting you to leave under Section 21, than to say, I'm asking you to leave because you're difficult, which then stays on that tenant's record, causing future problems later on. And it removes a stigma that may attach, not necessarily to bad tenants, but against ones who have had complaints against them. And in this way, everybody gains. And if you doubt this, look at the boom in the private rental sector, which began with Section 21 coming in, and it helps mobility of labour. And what does mobility of labour do? It increases economic opportunity and activity. It makes the labour market more flexible. But this bill isn't the only problem. There are further proposals that harm property owners without helping tenants. Under Michael Gove's plans, councils... And I wouldn't give councils any more powers. They've got far too many busybody powers already. But councils are set to be granted new powers to force second homeowners to apply for planning permission before letting properties to tourists in popular areas. Part of the plan include a mandatory national register intended to keep track of short-term lets. But what right does the government have to do this? It's your property. Why shouldn't you let it out for a few weeks? Any serious Conservative government's impulse would oppose this socialist move. Flexible letting arrangements encourage tourism and boost local economies through visitors, sometimes to relatively poor areas. There are already 20 planning classes. Who in their right mind thinks we need a 21st? And it won't help the housing shortage. This is caused by the failure to build more houses because of the already over-bureaucratic and complex planning system. More regulations cannot possibly be part of the solution. They're likely to make it worse. In truth, renters' and landlords' interests converge. If costs are lower for landlords, costs will be lower for renters. When we make renting more difficult for landlords, that imposes costs onto renters and supply falls and prices rise. Indeed, with rent being expensive in certain parts of the country and having gone up, what we ought to do is make it easier for people to let properties to boost supply and bring prices down. These are arguments that I would normally expect to have with the Labour Party, with the Socialists. Instead, I seem to be having them with my fellow Tories. As always, let me know your thoughts. Mailmog at gbnews.com.